Humans are relatively stupid. If you can irritate them and say, he did it, he did it, you get two guys slugging it out, and you take over what you want. And, um, and in fact, it was just you that started the whole process. So why abandon a successful strategy that's been uh, proven to, you to work all this time? And it's not that the strategy itself is failing, because I think there are actually moves that can be seen, patterns again, in the um, uh, developing manifestation of reality that these guys actually do want a giant collective government approach. And it, the only reason I can think of is that it makes sense only if you stop looking at Earth as a uh, isolated, closed system, and instead had to look at Earth as part of a greater, larger system. Then you'd want everybody all cohesively behind you, whether it was through coercion or what, if you're pulling the strings and making the moves for the collective populace of Earth in dealing with somebody else. But if you're just thinking of Earth as an isolated, you know, uh, fighting amongst ourselves, then the way to power is to continue to maintain the divide-and-conquer approach. Excellent. That, <laughs> that is so... That has the ring of total accuracy on that. It seems, to, it seems a good set of conclusions to draw. It is. Because ha- it's moving up. It's, you know, the power of ten. Move up and look at what's happening in the whole neighborhood, not just on that street. Right, exactly. And so if that's the case then, then there should be some other... This is one of those things where I like to say, okay, if postulate A is true, then what predictive uh, elements can we come from postulate A that would validate it? And so you should be able to make some predictions based on your theory that would say, well, if that's the case, then this also ought to be the case. And indeed, a lot of these um, contact meme-related stuff is just scaling uh, right through our society. We've had a... Uh, a very large uptick in um, uh, benign neglect, if you will, by the powers that be all around the contact meme. Uh, everything from movies all the way through people like the exopolitics thing that are doing it at a serious level. Nowadays, where um, the powers that be appear to have taken more or less a hands-off approach. Not that they're supporting it, but they're no longer attempting to dampen down quite as much. Same thing seems to be true of all these um, UFO sightings, which are on the increase. And so it kind of makes sense. Ah, I see. They're trying to get us all aligned with this one vision at the same time, you know, propelling us this way, that way, and the other way. The whole idea, uh, the conclusion that you can draw that they really do want to eliminate some huge amount of the populace makes sense at one level, but it doesn't make sense in that context. It doesn't make sense that you would want to eliminate a population if you're going to need vast quantities of cannon fodder, for instance, if you're planning some kind of interplanetary war. You don't want to reduce your populace. So I just don't know about that component, why they're going to such lengths on the swine flu, who's, which the whole point of it either is to form us into a collective where they're going to give us mind control zombie drugs and or they're going to give you drugs that are going to kill you. There's no other point. They're certainly not making drugs that are going to in any way affect you if you've got the swine flu. So the the conclusions are somewhat at odds there with what's actually manifesting relative to the swine flu. Now, it could be that I'm attempting to see a monolithic uh, powers that be structure where a more diverse range of opinions exist and that some pe- some of them want a world government and a vast populace to act as their muscle, so to speak, and another group wants to uh, have the Earth remain isolated and reduce the populace to a manageable size. And it may be that there are two factions that way. If so, it would be very difficult to determine, and not anything that we particularly um, uh, put our any energy towards, just because there's so much in the way of crises developing, uh, well, right now and, and through into the fall. This is, a, this is such a weird planet. It's strange. <laughs> uh, you, you know, so that's probably why we're so fascinating to uh, all the space aliens. You know, it's like some kind of bizarre um, Douglas Adams meets uh, Day of Your Lives, you know? <laughs> and they, they probably just can't get enough of this. And then we broadcast it. Exactly. Not only are we so goofy as to live it, but we put it on, on film and shoot it out into space. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, we're going to take a short, very short break here. Beyond the Ordinary with Cliff of HalfPastHuman.com. We are very beyond the ordinary with Cliff today. And um, so this is fascinating, your your thoughts on, on uh, the global change of a strategy do you think that they're going to be now going if they get this whole planet in one global group 
Are they going to start going for galactic power? Well, we actually have to acknowledge that both Kellerman and Ian Lungold, um, the latter of deceased, are, are very bright people, and that they indeed have decoded in their various separate ways within the uh, Mayan cosmology this idea that we're stepping from uh, one level to the next, from a planetary view which has only emerged recently. Bear in mind, within my lifetime, when I was born, my uh, range was national at best, and now it's planetary, and it's a, just a strange planet because I can speak with people in Russia in the morning and then uh, people in Yelm here, you know, 40 miles away in the afternoon with the same ease relatively. So we've become a planetary species at that level. Not all of us, but uh, that's to be understood because there's a lot of us, and it's going to take a while to, to get us all in the, in the same set of circumstances. But I know we're going galactic at our species level and probably even beyond that. And I say beyond that because the next stage up is this concept of universal. And that's where it gets real tricky and very interesting. So, for instance, at the boundary layer between uh, planetary and galactic, you uh, basically lose any uh, allegiance to nationalism. And that's probably got the uh, powers that be a little bit scared, that there's people running all over the planet now that really don't care what country they are nominally from, that they operate on a planetary level, whether they're sitting on their butt like uh, I am here with access to the Internet or whether they're jetting all over, um, you know, delivering information to various different groups and organizing. So... This has got uh, the powers that be a little bit upset because the next stage is to go to galactic in which if you look back from a galactic view, then you see your planet as part of a larger uh, set of uh, circumstances within a probably much larger galactic civilization than we can ever acknowledge. Let us first acknowledge that we're very much like the great apes, the big primates in Africa, or for instance, the um, orangutan in uh, Indonesia, although I'm not quite sure about the orangutan, but in any event, for sure with the gorillas. They're sitting there eating and munching, and they see humans coming through, and they have no concept of um, uh, the airport in France or, you know, the Queen of England or how huge the civilization is that surrounds them, you know, on a whole planet, and they're sitting there in isolation of it all. We have to acknowledge that many people think that our civilization is at a crux, and I would agree with that, where we're going to make a transition from what's known as a status zero zero civilization to a status one. Status one is where we have a planetary concept. We're acting in more or less unison in our, our our combined best interest as a species, and we're in the process of moving off-world one way or another. So we're at that crux to do so, and that aligns very closely with the uh, latter part of the Ian Lungold and uh, John Kalaman viewpoint of the um, uh, Mayan description or cosmology, where you transit from one world to another through a greater... Uh, appreciation or, or connection to consciousness, which is a long way of coming back around saying that if this is happening at a planetary populace level, then certainly none of us are going to pay any attention to the powers that be, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the Queen and all of that. We'll just get rid of the economy, do away with money that deprives them of all of their power. We'll do away with a national set of politics, us against them, that does away with all of the uh, political minions that are uh, annoying us so constantly, and we'll concentrate on those things that we're really good at and uh, make a transition. It probably won't be all that easy, especially from the powers that be viewpoint. And that may be the only justification for a view that it's necessary or desirable to eliminate the populace. We see a lot of people, for instance, the new newly appointed science guy for Obama has a history of discussing depopulation. We have Kissinger discussing that, the big new Brzezinski, etc. Oh, and also, by the way, in our data, now we uh, I'm rather pleased to announce that we are starting to see some signs of the bespoke fear language from the powers that be. And one of the more prominent ones is out on YouTube, and it says a big new Brzezinski saying, we are afraid of a global uh, political awakening. And, you know, this is, we, we'd forecast uh, uh, probably a year and a half ago that in the summer of 2009, at that point of transition, that the powers that be would start using fear language out and about. And sure enough, it's showing up. So that gives us some level of confidence in suggesting that while the powers that be are engineering all kinds of stuff right and left, most of it looks like it's going to fail in the coming chaos. Not that, that the chaos part's going to be good, but the fact that the powers that be won't be able to pull off their grand scheme uh, does appear to be good. Okay, this is very elementary here, but there is, 
Well, let's see, in different parts here. It is going to be chaotic, which is good. Chaos is a good form of creation. But it's going to be rather horrific what is happening. We've al- we're already seeing people with minds more out of control or thinking more out of control than we ever have before. I mean, yes. there's lunacy out there. Yes. Gertie Jeff called it the solar lunius. Yes. The, <laughs> the external influences on humans that make them go a little bit crazy. Yes. And batty. And in fact, we're seeing that at all different levels, and you'll notice that that's probably, a, or, or rather we can attribute the recent expression of anger, not that it's not justified, but the expression itself coming out in the way it has in these town hall meetings, as well as in... Um, a personal attack showing up on everybody, and Mercury has yet to go retrograde. So what's up? Well, it's probably this thing we call the big squeeze, and it's a magnetic influence. It's not only affecting the whole solar system; it's affecting us as individual humans. So, so what is the what is the direction that the powers that be? Why is it? Why are they pushing on decimating? at least part of the populace, if they're afraid that there is an awakening and it's becoming obvious to them, an awareness, say, not an awakening, but an awareness of things as they are, who they're going to get rid of are the people that are totally in fear and in fear of not having a chance to get a medicine, for instance, which drives people to go do it. But the ones that are knowing what's going on a little bit more, those are the ones I should think they would be Missing. more. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, correct. They're going to drop through the. They're actually almost. I mean, at one level, it's uh, very elegant. It's as though the universe has provided a self selecting mechanism for uh, awareness or consciousness in the sense that you'll step away and disengage from these guys and therefore be um, <laughs> less. less uh, uh, there'll be less of a problem in your life. Um, it's one of these things, though, you have to consider some of the other possibilities. It may not matter. For one, it just simply may not matter. All they, they may have to do is, if, if that is the goal, and it's not simply a scheme to make money, and which seems they're, they're putting too much emotional energy in it just for that, but um, if, if we acknowledge that it was not just a scheme to make money, then there is a real possibility that the introduction of live virus at this particular point within vaccines could be intended as a method of infecting the populace. And we also have to acknowledge here that the powers that be going all the way back to the Vatican have always used uh, bioweapons against indigenous populations. You know, in Latin America and in the American